Hello and welcome to the Riot and Verse Report. Rick surprised us today with another casting announcement, and it's double surprising because it's for a character that does not appear until the second book. So, without further ado, let's meet the actor cast to play Hermes, Lynn manuel Miranda. You might know him from the smash hit musical he created, Hamilton, where he played the titular role, Alexander Hamilton. He has also created and starred in the award-winning musical, In the Heights, and wrote the music for Moana, Encanto, and additional songs for the upcoming live-action Little Mermaid. With his huge musical theater background, I certainly did not expect him to be cast in this role, so I was definitely surprised. He will play Hermes, the messenger god and the god of roads, travel, gymnasiums, athletes, diplomacy, orators, thieves, commerce, trade, and invention. Hermes is also the father of Luke Castellan, who is being played by Charlie Bushnell in the Disney Plus adaptation. Disney and Rick announced his casting this afternoon by sharing these photos after Rick and Becky teased the upcoming announcement a few hours before. What am I doing today? Well, I'm at Mammoth Studios walking down to stage two. I hear we have some exciting news to announce on the casting front today. Unfortunately, it's a really long walk. This is the hallway that leads to studio two. Yes, it's quite a ways. They tell me this used to be a mattress factory for the Sears Corporation. And then it was turned in to a studio. As you can tell, it's quite a long walk down this creepy hallway to get to the stage. This is me still walking. I'll get back to you when I get there. Yeah, pretty much still walking. Still walking, but I can see the door now. That's usually a good thing. Okay. I think just a few more miles, and the right might be there. I hope there's good news on the other side of that door. We little car hats. We might need those. Okay, I think we're getting close to the news. I'll see you on the other side. Now knowing that the announcement was for the god of roads and travel, it seems Rick was hinting at this when he talked about the long distance he had to travel to get to the announcement. Rick also made a blog post to discuss this casting more. In it, he mentions his history with Lynn, saying, I have, of course, been a fan for years, and we'd corresponded a few times since his son and he are both fans of the Percy Jackson books, but this was the first time I'd gotten to meet him in person. It's always wonderful when someone so multi-talented and wildly successful turns out to be also a genuinely nice and decent person. Lin-Manuel is that kind of guy. About Lin as Hermes, Rick says, once we'd written the script and had Hermes' lines, I could not get Lin-Manuel Miranda's voice out of my head. I knew he would be the perfect person to bring Hermes to life in all his complex glory. I figured it was a long shot. Lin-Manuel is a busy guy. But with our showrunner's encouragement, I sent him a note saying, Hey, you ever felt like being a god for a couple of days? To my delight, he was excited to join the Percy Jackson family. His son even provided him with some background reading on Hermes to prep him for the part. He adds, As I've told you before, the Percy Jackson TV set is a happy place to work. It really feels like a family. Lin-Manuel's presence only made it better. He was generous and kind and delivered a performance that ignites the screen. Wait until you see him with Percy and Annabeth. Wow. The best part was watching him work with our young stars. What an incredible experience for them and for us. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing his interpretation of the character, especially his dynamic with Charlie's take on Luke. And it is so exciting that we get to see Hermes earlier than expected in the series. On that, Rick says, Now you book fans may be thinking, wait a minute, Hermes doesn't appear until the second book, The Sea of Monsters. You are correct. But remember when I told you that we are adding new glimpses of backstory, easter eggs, and other nuances to enhance the narrative while remaining true to the original storyline? This is a prime example. When you see the episode in question, it will make sense why we introduced Hermes so early. This is one change I can't wait to see, and I think it will give us more of an opportunity to understand his and Luke's relationship. 
I do wonder how he is being weaved into the story and at which episode and point in the story. Another clue about the moment is that it is one where only Percy and Annabeth meet him, not Grover. Also keep in mind that in the most recent update, Rick said that they were at the part of the story where they go to the Lotus Hotel. So my guess is either just before or just after that moment. But let me know your guesses for when that scene will be. We'll have to wait to find out, but I like that we won't be able to guess and know everything about the story right from the start, and that it will be fresh and new to everyone watching, both new and old fans alike. Speaking of the Lotus Hotel, we got some more filming updates in the last week or so. Apparently, they had over 400 extras on set for the Lotus Hotel scene, all dressed in clothes from different decades. That's so many extras! And the different decades being represented in the costumes will be so fun to see. And more on the Lotus Hotel, I want to talk about the Easter eggs I mentioned last video and how I think one would be Nico and Bianca. To clarify, I don't think their official actors will be cast already because it is way too early, and they are meant to be stuck there and not age until they get out in the Titan's Curse. So it wouldn't make sense to cast them now. Easter eggs are typically harder to notice things in movies and shows, stuff in the background, or coded clues in the dialogue. When I say I think the D'Angelo's will be one of the Easter eggs, I mean that maybe we will see two extras paired together as a brother and a sister, dressed in 1940s clothing. Maybe we will just see the back of their heads or just in the background, and that is meant to be a reference to Nico and Bianca. Or maybe when Percy is telling the others that there are all these people from different time periods, he might mention a brother and sister say it's the 40s, among other people he mentions. It will be a treat for the fans, something we will spot and notice and will make a big deal about, but nothing the general audience will pick up on or think is significant. Anyways, for more filming updates, we got these photos from a set being built for the show. I can't quite tell what it is or what it could be at this point in the story, but as always, let me know your predictions down below. And finally, back to Rick Riordan's blog post. Towards the end, he mentions, We all agreed we can't wait for season two. Fingers perpetually crossed, of course, that we get greenlit for a second season, but I am optimistic. That optimism is a good sign, demigods. Nothing is guaranteed, of course, but he also told us he was optimistic about the show getting greenlit about a year ago, and I don't think he would tell us this if he wasn't sure enough. And that's all for this video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. With that being said, this has been the Riot Inverse Report. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you with the next wave of news. Bye!